Okay, welcome to the second session of the morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about Reveal, the much promised tool you've all heard about um, yesterday, about introducing OpenMP directives to your code relatively painlessly. Um, this is a brand new tool. It's provided on our Cray computers. Um, how many people have actually implemented OpenMP ever in their codes? A few. How many people want to implement OpenMP in their codes? More people. <laughs> Great. Um, so let's say you have a code. Sometimes you may have a legacy code. A professor writes a code, it gets passed on to a grad student, then a postdoc gets it, then eventually you get it. You can have legacy code with hundreds of lines, hundreds of variables, complicated loop structures. You might not know where to start from. Um, and this actually kind of looks neat and easy. It's all tabbed. You can sort of see the loops. But um, it's not necessarily like that. So. Not all loops are created equal. Some might be more intensive, uh, some might be less intensive. So if you grab a piece of code and say, where can I start implementing OpenMP from, you can have new tools that are just coming up to help you do that. Identify the most intensive loops, uh, I help you scope variables. Um, so the one we're talking about today is going to be the Cray Reveal. But there's also uh, Intel Advisor that we're going to start uh, working with as well. But we're not going to talk about that today. But if you're wondering if you can use any of this, if you don't have access to a Cray machine, then it is possible. So this is what Reveal looks like. And uh, it's, it's a nice GUI. It might look a bit messy right now. but. Here is your source code, the same source code as you saw in the previous slide. Over here, you have identified, or the code has a program has identified for you, the most intensive and time-consuming loops. So you can immediately zoom in on the loops that need the most work. Um, you can go to these loops. They're nicely demarcated for you, so you don't have to scavenge around looking where it starts and where it ends. And you, Clicking on the loops, you can get all the variables that are within the loop. It can tell you or provide information or suggestions or which ones are shared or private or first private, like Neil was talking about before. Um, you can also get a nice compiler feedback. So if you still want to do the one processor, one core optimization like we learned about yesterday, you still get um, more information than uh, just the listing telling you what was vectorized and why or why not, what was unrolled. Um, but best of all, Cray can give you the directive that you can just click on it and it inserts the directive for you. OMP parallel do, first private, last private, shared. Um, so this looks pretty neat. So this could be a painless way. If you don't know any OpenMP or know very little, you have a big, fat code you don't know what to do with, it can be a very nice guide uh, to get you started. It's definitely not magic, though. It is in the early development stages. So you guys probably are some of the first people, I think, right, to ever use the Cray Reveal. So if you find any bugs, Please do let us know, and we'll pass it on uh, to Cray. Um, as you will see, it will not resolve all the variables. And it does the coarse crane parallelism. You have a loop, you put a directive. It won't do things like Neil was showing, like identify critical regions, atomic, barriers. It won't tell you anything about that. So at the end of the day, you still need to understand OpenMP. You do need to understand your code, but it can give you a great place to start from um, to help you work through everything. You can do this piecemeal, parallelize something, run another performance analysis on it, um, and go from there. So uh, it's uh, best to learn by doing things, so I will not bore you anymore. I have a, a tutorial that I've prepared. So the next like hour, hour and a half, 
I'm going to let you work through it. Uh, it's actually in analog form, printed paper, but I can, you've already passed it on. All right, so if you have, it should be self-explanatory. If you have any questions, people around here are going to be walking by uh, to help you. And if you have your own code and you want to start working on it, maybe later in the afternoon or if you're really fast and finish right now, um, yeah, we'll be here to help. So have fun with it. So some people were asking about uh, Apprentice 2. Uh, it's not necessary to, to view this uh, in order to go through uh, with reveal. I just think it's a, since you have the .ap2 file, what, what it does is when you load the .ap2 file onto reveal, that's what actually gives you the loop work estimates and the percentages of the loop. You can still fire up reveal just with the program library and it will give you all the loops and the variables, but it will not tell you which ones are the top loops and which ones are the most intensive. Um, Apprentice 2, you can always generate it whenever you do a PAD report. This one is going to be a lightweight option because what we want for reveal is the top loops. When you did minus W, that traces basically the most intensive uh, functions. If you do a, with your PAD build, I don't know if I should write here a minus u, that would actually trace all the user defined functions. You can do a man apprentice uh, or a man path report. And if you really want to get like a really good look at performance analysis, you can group things if you have an MPI code by, by MPI, by OpenMP, by IO. So the more options you give in your path report, the more instrumentation you give it, you're going to get more information. So this one is a lightweight view. But you can ba basically see the, OK, now this one doesn't work. You can, it, it will show you the most intensive loop, loops, how much time it takes in the resin. So with the minus W, you're just seeing the top loops. If you had a minus U or anything else or everything, you would see every single call you have in your code, how much time it takes. But basically, you can just play with it. This is, now you don't have any threads. There's only one process. But if you had more threads, it will show you all the threads. It will show you any load imbalances. So um, yeah, while this is not necessary to play around with for reveal, it's a good tool in and of itself um, just to see where you spend time in your code. Uh, load imbalance is a big thing, especially if you have MPI codes. Um, so it, this gives you the structure of your code. The mg.f is the executable, and it can tell you which routine calls which, uh, how much time is spent on each. Uh, yeah, you just need to, um, if you have time or with your own code, to play around with it. Afterwards, where you have, when, if you manage to parallelize one of your loops, you can go over here and it will actually throw you, well, maybe I did show you a parallelized one because this, this shows the threads and any imbalance that um, exists there. So it's just a nice graphical interface. When you see a path report, it's basically tables and numbers, and you have to decode everything and see, oh, this table means this, and uh, it, it's basically a nice graphical interface that gives you the same information as your .xf pad report file, but you know, it depends if you like looking at things graphically or if you like just command line numbers, um, yeah. But I, I like it. It's uh, easy to identify um, where you need to put your resources or your parallelizing efforts on. So, yeah. Anyone, uh, any problems so far? Did people manage to parallelize at least one loop or not yet? No. Nope. 